Welcome to the Trees and Forests presentation. In this short little video, you'll learn why trees and forests are important, the difference between coniferous and deciduous trees, and some terminology that will help you use dichotomous keys to identify tree samples that we sent to your classroom. My name is Corey Klassen, and I'm the Executive Director for the Lesser Slave Forest Education Society. I'm based in Slave Lake, Alberta, and I've been taking students on field trips in the forest for 10 years now. My absolute favorite field trip is a bog hike. This picture was taken in a bog just outside of High Prairie. I'd like to start off by asking you to think about why trees and forests are important. Why do we need them? And what benefits do we get from trees and forests? There are many possible answers here. One is oxygen. Trees give off oxygen. We breathe in the oxygen. We breathe out carbon dioxide and the trees take it in so they clean our air. Also, young healthy forests absorb and store carbon dioxide, and this helps to combat climate change. The forest is also a place for animals to live. It provides vital habitat. Trees hold the soil in place, and roots help stop erosion from wind and rain. There's also biodiversity, so a huge variety of plants and trees grow in the forest. There's so much biodiversity. Bio means life and diversity means variety. Therefore, biodiversity means the variety and complexity of all living things and the way they interact within a forest. Trees and forests help to keep our lakes and rivers and creeks clean. They also provide us with recreation opportunities like hiking, quadding, bird watching, hunting, camping. Wildlife get their food from the forest. Their seeds, bark, leaves, twigs, nuts. Humans also get some of their food from the forest. There's wood products that come from the forest. We have lumber, oriented strand board, veneer, pulp, and so on. And many people have jobs in the forest. The forest supports many families and communities throughout Alberta. Indigenous people rely on the forest for traditional uses such as hunting, trapping, and gathering food. So what is an ecosystem? Well, it can be described as an interacting system of living organisms and their environment. And so it consists of living and non-living things. You can see from this diagram that the forest ecosystem consists of many abiotic or non-living things and biotic or living things. For example, the trees and animals are biotic factors in the forest, while rocks and soil are abiotic factors. As you can see in this picture, the boreal forest goes across the entire top of the world. It is the world's largest land-based ecosystem. And here in northern Alberta, we live smack dab in the middle of the boreal forest. It's all around us. The boreal forest is a very big ecosystem, but within that forest there are smaller ecosystems, such as new growth after a wildfire. There are mixed wood forests with both evergreen trees and broadleaf trees. We also have climax forests, which are considered very old forests. They're in Alberta, that means they're over 150 years old. Different plants grow in different ecosystems depending on the soil, temperature, the climate, and the length of the growing season. Pine trees are best adapted to grow in a sandy soil. Black spruce trees are best adapted to grow in wet peat moss. Cattails grow on the edges of ponds and marshes. And plants that grow on a mountaintop are not the same type of plants that grow beside of a lakeshore. Knowledge of the types of trees and plants will indicate what kind of wildlife live in the area, the type of soil, and can help us manage a forest for all uses. In Alberta's boreal forest, there are nine different kinds of trees that grow. We have three deciduous and six coniferous. The three deciduous trees are trembling aspen, balsam poplar, and paper birch. Well, what is a deciduous tree? They have broad leaves, the leaves change color and drop off each fall. They produce flowers or catkins and seeds are found in fruits or nuts. And one way to remember this is a deciduous tree decides to lose their leaves. We have six coniferous trees in the boreal forest 
and they are white spruce, black spruce, balsam fir, lodgepole pine, jack pine, and tamarack, or larch. Well, what is a coniferous tree? Well, coniferous trees have needles, and the needles generally live two to seven years. Coniferous trees produce cones, and seeds are found in the cones. One way to remember a coniferous tree is conifers make cones. It's a good mnemonic device. We have a special tree in Alberta. It's called the larch or tamarack and it's a coniferous tree but it acts like a deciduous tree. It has needles and cones so it's classified as a conifer however it drops its needles every year like a deciduous tree. The Guide to Common Native Trees and Shrubs of Alberta is a great book to use to identify trees but you do need to know certain terms so you can use the book properly. So we'll go over those terms now. They're going to be leaf arrangement, leaf type, and leaf margins. We're going to start off by looking at leaf arrangement. In the boreal forest, the most common ways leaves can be arranged on a tree or shrub are in two different ways, opposite from each other or arranged alternately along the branch. Our trees do not have world leaves, but many plants with world leaves are all around us in the boreal forest. Then we have leaf type. The broad leaves we are concerned with are either simple or compound. With a simple leaf, there is only one leaf stem per petiole, and a compound leaf will have several leaflets coming off the petiole. Note how the general outline of the compound leaf looks like a simple leaf. Also, the leaflets do not have a stem. For trees with needles, they can be attached singly, individually off the branch, or bound together in bundles. If they are bound together in bundles, they are what's classified as sheathed. And then when we're looking at broad leaves, trees, a variety of leaf margins can be found. For example, a leaf can have fine curved teeth, large coarse teeth, or it could have a smooth margin. Next, we'll work together using dichotomous keys to identify plant samples. For this part, we'll join your class virtually and work through the tree and plant samples online together. Thank you so much for watching our video. We hope you've enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you soon.